Hello to all you hip skips out there, and welcome to the jungle. Join Disney historian David Dr. Skipper Marley and art director and crooner Trevor Kelly as these former jungle skips explore the world of Disney, pop culture, and theme parks. But hold on tight, because just like a jungle cruise, their conversations often head deep into uncharted waters. Now, grab a seat and enjoy episode 19, Llamas on Main Street, Hot Forearm Summer, and Water Wars, Jungle Cruise versus Storybook Land. Move it up, skips. Hey, so, how's it going? Going great. How are you doing? Oh, I am uh, magical. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Very excited. One day after this premieres, yes. I will be on my way to Hawaii. I know. How exciting. Very exciting. For your birthday. For my 40th birthday. For, I was going to say you're turning 29. That's right. That's I awesome. Feel, I feel 29, uh, but my liver is 65. <laughs> And tell everybody, when exactly is your birthday? My my actual birthday is July 22nd. It's going to be beautiful. Got some friends joining us. Wow. Uh, and I'll have a, a, f a nice little uh, trip report when we come back. I can't wait to uh, hear it. But yeah, any, any uh, interaction you can give me on my birthday will be great because Jess goes snorkeling. Yeah. And I have no ability to be anything except for uh, a stone in the water. <laughs> so. You can't float? Uh... Science tells me I should, yeah, but the panic okay. tells me I can't. Okay, I was on swim team in high school. Were you my freshman year? And I was the only guy in the team that couldn't float. Because <laughs> I was really? like, I was like six. But by, by my freshman year, I was like six foot six one. But I was like maybe a hundred and forty pounds. Okay, so I had no fat on me at all. Oh, and I never. This is this sounds like a really douchey thing to say, but it's true. I never floated in water till I was in Israel at the Dead Sea, which is like. You have to float in that, right? You have to float. You yeah. can't sink. So I'm going to go, I'm floating. I'm floating. And my friend's like, we're all floating. <laughs> I'm like, I've never floated. And I didn't float again in water till I was, to me, way overweight. And I was floating in the ocean. I'm like, yeah, I got to go on a diet. <laughs> so my coach was like, Marley, you got to gain weight. You spend too much time staying on top of the water. Okay. I, uh, I'll make this brief. The only reason I have no interest in swimming anymore yeah. is because the very first swim lesson I ever had was in yeah. Arizona. And we went to some clearly not certified person. It was just some person's backyard some that dude. was offering swim lessons in the neighborhood. Yeah. And my first swim lesson was they took me to the middle of the deep end and just dropped me in. Oh, God. And said, all right, swim. But you lived. Look at you. It's debatable. <laughs> I learned how to swim at four months old. Really? We had a pool in our house when I was a baby. And then we, when I was four, we moved. Why would you leave a house that had a pool for a house with no pool? <laughs> uh, but so there's pictures of me swimming as an infant so I could swim before I could crawl. Wow. Yeah. Man. Like my brothers and sisters who are much older than I would, would like drop me in the deep end and they would watch me sink and then I would come back to the surface and do laps and oh, they would God. use it to like terrify my relatives when they came over to visit. And this is reminding me, I almost drowned at my grandma's too. Oh my God. When I was younger. <laughs> Welcome to Swim Safety Podcast. That's right. Your they were all having dinner inside, and I I took a bad move in the pool, and I inhaled a bunch of water, oh, and no. then it just started spiraling from there. Oh, no. And I just dragged myself out of the pool. And those that know me know I'm not dramatic at all. Uh, <laughs> that's why get along so well. That's right. I just remember collapsing on the side of the pool like coughing up like water and uh -huh. stuff and then screaming at all the adults inside because <laughs> basically all they did was watch they were eating and in front of a window with their child potentially drowning in the pool i'm like you son of bitches <laughs> <laughs> i was dying in there wow wow yeah that's scary so Huawei's gonna be fun so why is it going to be a blast? So I can give you a swim lesson before you go if you want. Thank All right. you. The key is just keep moving because we'll drown if we don't. Uh, don't inhale water. Do not inhale water. Okay. Keep your mouth and your nose you know, closed and you'll be fine. Got it. Yeah. So you were, you just had a little fun uh, excursion up north. Yeah. I started out the month of July in Oregon at Tiki Con, the very last Tiki Con, or, or as we know, it might be the last Tiki Con. Okay. But it was a blast. Awesome. I, it was good to see all these people, uh, my friends at the Pacific Northwest. And I got to have a fun talk. And this place sat over 600 people. That oh, was, my God. It was huge. Yeah. So I had a great talk. Their projection was fantastic. Like, oh, the sound and everything worked really well, which is always nice. And my oldest daughter got to be there because she's seen me lecture since she was an infant. Mm -hmm. And she'd never seen me give a regular, like, fun talk. Oh, really? She'd only see me do professor talks. Really? And, and my other daughter had seen me give a talk. They're like, you have to see dad do, like... 
his non-professor show. As, as somebody that is, I would say, a close friend of yours, yeah. it is a real treat watching you work, uh, work a room. It's Thank pretty you. fun. Thank you. And it was a good room. They were really into it. So it was fun. And I had a great time. But it was fun to watch her. She, and she goes afterwards, her first comment was, I forget that other people find you funny. <laughs> That's part of the charm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I spoke there. I spoke at the Adventurers Club in Los Angeles, which was for a Jungle Cruise fan. You got to go to that place. I definitely want to. You show me some pictures. It has some like extinct black rhino heads on the wall and like, I'm, like all these animals. I'm like, you can't kill these. This is why they're dead because you guys shot them in the 1880s. And they all have stories about murdering uh, extinct animals. Oh, yeah. I saw a real shrunken head. Oh, my. Gosh. On their tiki bar, yeah, there's a real shrunken head. I'm like, well, there's something I just see. I see like fake ones. Old. Did they know who it was of? Uh, it was from. I forget. They told me where it was from, but they got it in the 1930s, okay. and they have like the records of it. Like for everything wow. they have, they go, oh, we were allowed to have it because this person donated it before World War II. And it wasn't a member. No, it was not. <laughs> no, no, no. Somebody from from um, I want to say Papua New Guinea. Okay, uh, I forget. Oh, it wasn't like a colonialist uh, that. Wrong place, wrong time. No, it was, no. Oh. It was like, here's a woman that we killed and shrunk her head. Oh, and, my God. Yeah. Yeah. The ones you can buy, uh, like, from artists are much more fun looking. This one yeah. was, like, very smooth and weird looking. Oh. You're like, huh, okay. It's like, uh, so it looks nothing like the golden tiki uh, shrunken nothing, head wall. Got it. Nothing, nothing. No, no. It, it, that literally could be anybody's head and you can't tell. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Makes you realize bones play an important part in your face. Hmm. That's why you got them in there. I've heard this. Yeah. You're a doctor, <laughs> <laughs> but not the helpful kind. <laughs> so, uh, but it was great. Had a great time up there. Had absolutely. Just love Oregon. I, and the, the, the fun thing about Tiki Con is on the last day, the Sunday, they do a big bar crawl where there's five like full size big buses and they go to five different locations, like real Tiki bars, and then somebody's house. And my buddy, former skipper, Keith Hart, who was a skipper in the late eighties, early nineties, uh, lives up there and he, he uh, has a beautiful mid-century modern house that, oh, that the, the top floor you would go nuts for. And then he has a basement the size of his house. And it is one of the best tiki bars I've ever been. It's better than some professional tiki bars I've been to. Really? I posted a, a, a reel about it, but there's a, a video of, a, there's like a parrot on a box talking to you and you go down and there's all this Elvis stuff because he's an Elvis impersonator. And it's twice the size of this living room. What's the it's, name of it? It's, it's called... I don't know. Is it Elvis the enchanted, related? The Enchanted Jungle Room. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. So he kind of did an Elvis thing, kind of did a yeah. Enchanted Tiki Room vibe on it. And so these five different buses came in every hour or two, and wow. they were just increasingly drunk as the day went by. <laughs> I, I I saw, because uh, we follow, I follow a couple people that went to that crawl. Yeah. And I think it was a uh, Miss Swizzle Stick. Yeah, yeah. It was fun to watch the progression. And also, that was my first thought is like, how blasted are these people yeah. at the end of the day? Because every place they go, they get free drinks. Oh, my so God. So I was helping pour, because they're like, I was supposed to just hang out and be Dr. Skipper at his house. And I'm like, I got to do something. Yeah. So like I helped pour drinks and I helped pick up trash where people would leave. I'm like, I just can't sit here. That was awkward. But, but it was a blast. So I had, a, I had a great time. Very happy to be home. But but TikiCon was just, just great. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's got like maybe a thousand people go. So it's it's intimate where yeah. if that sounds big, wait till Tiki Oasis. Tiki Oasis will have between six to eight, maybe nine thousand people go that weekend. Yeah, Tiki Oasis is insane. Insane. Yeah. And we'll take one second to plug. That Saturday at Tiki Oasis, six PM. It's free, no tickets, just first come, first serve. Uh if you dig the podcast or if you dig just, you know, hanging out with a fun crowd of people. Come see us, The Jungle Live. Yeah. Uh, courtesy of Baby Doe and Otto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank them so much for letting us do that. It'll be a, a, a free event at Tiki Oasis. So, and you can bring in booze and, and all that stuff. It's going to be, uh, it's going to get rowdy. Yep. It's yep. going to get messy. Yep. Uh, there is a booze tax. There is. Uh, for the hosts. That's it's, right. It's, a, it's actually, a, uh, I may not know, it's from the colonial era. It's a rule in San Diego. If Only in San Diego. If, if there's people speaking and you come in the room with booze, you must give them some. That's true. If they request it. And we're officially requesting some. <laughs> just to say, we just want to sip. Just give us a little. That's right. Uh, we're not greeny. Yeah, no. Just Which, little... It's just booze. Yeah. What was I going to say? Uh, very uh, special episode. This is the first time we've done a podcast that's spitting distance from Disneyland's birthday. Yeah, I know. How exciting. It's the 17th, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 I don't know what... I, I'm not. I was told there'd be no math. I don't know what birthday this is for Disney. Fifty-five. Uh, it's fifty. What year is this? It's fifty-seven. 
68. 68 I was eventually old. correct. All right, good. There you go. All right, so all the pervs will be excited next year when it's 69 years. <laughs> That's right. Imagine the merch you can get in the oh, store then. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Mickey and Minnie, why? Oh, Donald and Daisy. <laughs> why? <laughs> uh, I, I have something for Disney's birthday. Go for it. Yeah, let's talk yeah? about Disney's birthday. Yeah, because okay. it's coming up. Now that we know how long it is, 68 years. So I looked up some obscure facts. Everybody Ooh. knows the normal facts for Disney's yeah. opening day and their birthdays, you know, how the asphalt and all that yeah. crap. Uh, I looked up some that I found kind of interesting that I'm sure you probably know. Okay. Um, and I'll go through I them and we'll chat about them. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm excited. So first one, okay. opening day prices. Yeah. Insane. This is going to hurt people. Admission was $1 for adults. Yeah. And fifty to seventy-five cents a kid, depending on their age. Yeah. Uh, and then you know the you had all the tickets, uh, and this made Disney's annual salary around three thousand three hundred dollars, which is insane. Wait, what do you mean annual salary? I, uh, from like what they made just based on admission. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The equivalent because I did this for my history of Disneyland class. The equivalent today would be paying about six fifty just to enter Disneyland and walk around and not go on any rides. Six fifty? Just fix six fifty just to walk in the door. God. And you can eat, you but you can't go on any rides. Rides are extra. That'd be a dream. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'd pay six fifty to walk around Disneyland. Now here's the deal. Yes. All right. So the average cost per guest per day in fifty five, about mm-hmm. two thirty seven. Uh and the <laughs> cost for a similar visit today. Uh, and even this, I think, is incorrect now because this might have been pre Genie Plus. Yeah, hundred and ninety six dollars. Wow. Yeah, it's an eighty three times uh, hike. Yeah, yeah. From the fifty. More than inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was wild. that's like worse than college tuition. <laughs> how much that has gone. And up. this has to be old because I would imagine that a guest spends one hundred and ninety six dollars just on Genie Plus for their family now. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went to the park recently. How was it? Uh, it was good. Yeah. We went to Carthay, Mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing to do. Yep. Yep. Went to Carthay and then uh, stumbled on over to Disneyland. Yeah. And it was, it was really cool. Um, what was it? I had not been there since they did the tram thing. What's the tram thing? They have a new tram loading area that you go through security and Uh you enter the tram under the, the Pixar Toy Story parking structure thing. Okay. Okay. And... You paid for Disney parking. Uh, that's one hundred ninety-six dollars right that's there. Right. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah. Uh, no, Haley uh, got us in, my sister. Nice. So we didn't have to pay for anything, which is very nice of her. But they have all these silhouettes of Disney characters on the wall. Yeah. As you're like pulling out of the uh, the tram area, and it pulls out, and you see all the silhouettes, like oh Pinocchio and Mickey and blah blah blah. Look for it next time you're there. Okay. They have the genie there. But in silhouette form, it's just a giant sperm on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. You'd think somebody would have looked at that and gone like, huh. Huh. Nah, maybe not genie. What, sperm with arms? Uh, he oh, has no. his arms folded, oh, so it no. just looks like so a little look like buff a sperm. sperm with a little, uh, <laughs> a little like, tail on its head. <laughs> That's for breaking into the egg to fertilize it. <laughs> That's right. Those are the ones that win. That's right, with the the double, the little, the little whip it's holding yeah, a whip, exactly. at the top of it. Exactly. Thing. Uh, we've already gone off the rails. Um, so that was one obscure fact. Okay. Uh, another one, and I don't know if you'd ever heard of this. In '73, Disney had a secret birthday celebration. No, I had never heard about this in my life. Okay. We would like to take a moment to let you hip skips know that Trevor used AI to find this particular fact. So this fact is in fact fake enjoy uh in 73 wait sh- is it a secret Are we allowed to stop? <laughs> they've the cat's out of the bag okay now. okay okay good i don't want to cause trouble it celebrated its 18th birthday which meant michael jackson was no longer interested in visiting oh, uh funny because oh, it's true it's an easy joke uh, but it's funny because it's true <laughs> so they uh with a secret birthday celebration the park remained open for 25 straight hours and they didn't tell anybody until guests were there that day so they were surprised with, uh, you get to stay, you can stay as long as you want now. Wow. Is that crazy? That is amazing. That they would do that and go like, oh, it's just going to be a surprise for people there that day. There's and, no way they would, they would advertise that for six months ahead of time. <laughs> no, Tickets right. Tickets would be $900. Well, it was like they did that uh, a couple of years back, yeah, right? Before in the before times. Yeah. People were giddy. And I'm like, I felt like I've been there for 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, I don't need to. If you're, you, you ever did like a double shift? Yeah. Yeah. No like, thanks. I did canoe races, went and had breakfast. They're like, hey, can you work early? I'm like, sure, I'll work early. And then I 
got extended. So I was there till nightfall. Oh I'm like, God. I've been here since since I got to the park at like 3.45 a.m. It's now like 8.39 p.m. I'd like to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. It's like, wouldn't it be cool to stay there all day? I'm like, no, done no. it. Done it. Yeah. People were nuts for it. Yeah. 73, they just locked the gates and said, you don't get, it's, it was Thunderdome. You can't <laughs> leave for 25 hours. Wow. Yeah. Try it. Wow. <laughs> they had just uh, the small world dolls hold hands uh, at the front gate. And they don't look fierce, but no. but don't mess. But that's the trick. Watch the first person go say something to them and see what happens. <laughs> you ever seen a Tasmanian devil? <laughs> they look cute. They look cute. They'll tear your face off. Those little guys look cute till you see one of them gnawing on grandma's jugular veins. <laughs> then you're going to. Then you're going to question what Alice Davis made. That's right. They don't open their mouths in the ride. No, they don't. <laughs> it's rows For a of reason. Teeth. Like sharks. <laughs> it is. <laughs> rows of teeth. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Man. Uh, and so. It's so interesting. It, I, I had never heard that before. I had never heard that in my life. Huh. And I'll be. So this one fact is from chat GPT. So I'm, I'm dubious. Uh oh. It might not be real. Oh. So we'll see. How did it know? I said, "Does no. You're a Disney historian. Give me some obscure birthday celebrations that Disney has done." And all of them checked out. I just never heard of the 73. Yeah, me neither. Cuz it talked about the Year of a Million Dreams. Oh, yep, yep, campaign yep. Campaign yep. that was uh, I remember 7 to 08. That. Yep. I had completely forgotten about that. Uh, cuz we made a little series of videos based on that. The Year of a Million Reasonable Dreams. Yeah, extremely reasonable <laughs> dreams. Whose dream is it to have a free churro? <laughs> That's right. Well, cuz they promoted it like we're going to make your dreams come true. Yep. And then all it was was yeah, free churros, yeah. Here's a t-shirt. Yeah. Here's a fun story. If you've read my books uh, or my Drum Cruise book or whatever, uh, there is a story about a guy called the Enemy of Fun, a manager. Oh, yeah. Who a friend of ours, uh, who we shall not name because he still works for the company, nicknamed this manager the Enemy of Fun. He was in charge of the Million Reasonable Dreams. Because really? I watched his little team and I'm like, oh, my. So I told my girls because they were little. I'm like, girls, that's the Enemy of Fun. <laughs> and he's in charge of having fun and handing out things. I'm like, yeah, just don't lean on anything. He'll get pissed <laughs> off. What's your dream? Oh, it's just it's just a churro. That's yeah. my only dream in life. Yeah. Well, you're in luck. There you go. <laughs> Can I stay at the park half hour early? How about 20 minutes? <laughs> sure. <laughs> 20 minutes early is fine. That's enough time for you to walk towards your ride <laughs> before thousands of people run past run you. Run right past you. Yeah. I had one other thing that okay. uh, uh, I wanted to get your take on. This is about the shortest lived attraction at Disneyland. Do you know this? Uh, it was only open for oh, two months. I got. Oh, it wasn't his train. His like miniature train thing. Uh, no, no. It was what the was Mickey it? Mouse Club Circus. Oh yeah, have you heard of this? I have heard of it. Yeah, I I had never heard of this in my yeah. life. It was a real circus because he wanted people to be able to see shows and stuff. Yeah. So they started a circus. And on opening day, one of the trapeze artists, her top fell off while she was flying around. <laughs> True story. True story. By her, it was a family park. Well, you know, you know, dad and mom have to have some fun. Right? Give, give them something nice to look at. That's and, right. Uh, so she was spinning around by her ankles on the thing with her top off. And they had a line tamer and all these things. And Walt wanted, the reason why I knew this is because Walt wanted real animals at the jungle. Oh. And they're like, you can't, because what if one of them gets out or there's a problem? And during the circus, they had a llama that ran down Main Street. And so these cast members were chasing a llama down Main Street <laughs> before they could bring it back. But they canceled it. But the guy that had uh, the lion tamer had a contract that Disney couldn't buy him out of, that he still demanded oh. to perform. So they made a little special area where you could watch his lion taming show. That's what they mentioned. Killers, yeah. jungle killers. Yes. Apparently they were sedated. Oh, probably. <laughs> Probably. What a, I only imagine the, the llama, it, it was like, it's like in Captain America when he wakes up and he runs out into Times <laughs> yeah. Square. He's like, yeah. what the hell is this? What is this? Am I in the 1890s? <laughs> right. But nobody realized nobody wants to go to a, like a show like that at Disneyland. Like Disneyland is enough of the show. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to see sad animals. Exactly. Uh, in a hot tent. Exactly. Let's uh, go see fake hot animals in it. Yeah. Yeah, in two, the jungle. Two months, the shortest yeah. lived attraction yeah. at Disneyland. I, I thought it lasted longer than that. Yeah, because the lion guy. But yeah, and then the lion guy uh, lasted another seven months. Yeah. So you ain't buying him out. I'm doing my show. No, they. they he died. He died doing what he loved. <laughs> getting <laughs> Get, mauled by getting mauled by lions. <laughs> That's right. It was always his childhood dream. <laughs> Ever since he was a kid. kid. I want to be mauled by lions. <laughs> okay. How do you do that? I'm gonna tranquilize him, then one day forget. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's just 
getting mauled. Quick, kids, look at the topless woman. <laughs> <laughs> Take your top off, Nancy. Take your top off, Nancy. <laughs> swing, swing. He's dying. Swing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fun Good stuff. Times. Happy birthday, Disneyland. I know. My fun Disneyland birthday fact is the day uh, the park was opened, they were still installing one of the elephants and trying to make it work. Oh, really? And so they had a crew working on the elephant during the live broadcast, during everything, and then they had a guy whose job it was to call out, boat, and then they would all hide <laughs> when a boat went by. And then when the boat was gone, they'd stand up and keep working, trying to attach all the electronics. Oh, my God. So there was just this random elephant standing out there, not working. Yeah. <laughs> And one guy's job. Boom! Which which one was it? Do you know? I have no idea. Because oh, okay. they were at a different spot. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They moved the they moved elephant the bathing pool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, just the first two. Before the elephant bathing pool was even a thing. Oh, really? It was just the two big African elephants. Oh. Yeah. I had no yeah, idea it yeah. was like that. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. Good and times. when did the bathing pool get thrown in? Uh, 62. That's when, like, Mark got Davis? Funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. And they took away the uh, severed uh, zebra corpses that the lions Eventually, were Eventually, yes. Yeah. Now it's just a sleeping zebra, which is a better joke. The sleeping it's zebra so is hysterical. <laughs> That's how they sleep, on their side, neck bent, surrounded by lions. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> kids would look and be like, oh, okay. And the oh, parents are just nice. like, oh, don't say anything. <laughs> don't scar my children. Please don't scar my children. Ah, the I'll, panicked look of parents. I'll do what I must. <laughs> <laughs> In the service of comedy, I will scar all of us. That's right. I'll make you happy by making none of us happy. <laughs> that's what it takes. So we just wanted to take a quick minute uh, before we hop on to our next topic to thank our first Patreon supporters. Yeah. Uh, if you like the podcast and you want to help uh, support and pay for some of our gas money and our booze money, patreon.com slash the jungle podcast. Yeah, we appreciate it. We got some hip skip supporters. This is our five dollar level. Darren Zakich, uh, Joshua Bell, and Nicole Klo. Fun fact: Nicole Klo, uh, early supporter of my original podcast. Joey and Trevor talk to each other. Seriously? Oh, yeah. oh awesome! Nicole. Oh, that's very cool. All right, I'm here to introduce and thank our Shriners for their support. Uh, this is gonna uh, the Shriners. You're gonna have some cool stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. I'll give you this hint at Tiki Oasis that no one else is going to get to hear. That's so right. Enjoy that. If you're not a member, come and join up. So our Shriners this month: Ashley Bragg. Jonathan 30 Acre, Terry Walker, Jim Chamberlain, sent from Disneyland, and Tropical Imports Limited. That's right, with their delightful can. They are, yeah, fantastic. And sent from Disneyland once sent me a postcard, and I felt very special. He sends postcards. From Disneyland? Yep, yep. Really? He makes his own postcards and sends them out, and oh I felt very special. Oh, my gosh. I got one like a year ago. I saved it. feel very special. Here's how twisted my head is. Immediately, I go like, that sounds like a good like serial killer uh, thriller. He just sends messages from <laughs> Disneyland, and they have to hunt him down. Because back in the day, you would stick something in the mail and they would stamp it at Disneyland. Oh. Like, like it's a little post office. So it said Disneyland on it. Now they just send it to the Anaheim post office. Oh, okay. This is Anaheim. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for supporting. Yeah. Thank you so much. It means a lot to us and it helps us uh, get better equipment and do some great things. Yeah. Uh, and booze. And booze. <laughs> well, here's what I was thinking about talking about today. Yeah. Because um, I, I, on the long drive back from Oregon, I listen to a lot of podcasts, Disney and otherwise. And uh, I thought, you know, people focus on very like specific items. Like, what do you think about the Star Wars hotel closing? What do you think about this or that? And I thought it'd be fun to talk about for non-cast members, like what, what it was like to work at Disneyland in the summertime. Oh, yeah. Because there were people that got hired, I remember, like in September or November. And they're like, I, you know, I've been here and summer was coming. And they're like, I'm a veteran now. And we're like, no, no. if you have not worked a summer, you are not a veteran. <laughs> like if you get hired June 1st. And you work a summer, you are just as much a veteran as the guy that got here in September. Because yeah. that was the crucible of working was summertime. Yeah. And if you hadn't worked summer, shut up, you're a rookie. Yeah, I had so I thought I got two summers. Yeah. Because yeah. I hired in right at the start of summer and then nice. I left after the next summer. Yeah, yeah. I had th well, I had four summers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my God. My first time there was just summer. What <clears throat> I think a lot of people don't realize is how ungodly hot the jungle gets and it's better than the rest of the park yeah uh the east side is 10 to 15 degrees hotter really so we're where it's cooler yeah because we have all the water and like tomorrowland has all that metal that gets hot oh yeah and, just and it can holds the heat and lets <laughs> it out and right. uh, same kind of with with the fantasy land all those buildings just yeah. soak in the heat where at least we're in when you're driving the boat it's not bad because you're in the front too that's true 
It so, just gets hot and like muggy because yeah. you're in like that yeah. climate. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, and then just touching just the grossest elbows. Yeah, which they don't do anymore. I uh, thank God. If you're gonna, if you die, you die. <laughs> if you fall in, you fall in. But I used to use that to make people walk around to the front of the boat. Oh, okay. Because there's two entrances, right? There's the one in the front, like the middle of the boat, and the one on the way back. Yeah. And I like to work rear load, the back one, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, rear load, but but people would sit right by the engine, and I was so tall, I could hold their elbow and not let them sit down. Oh, wow. Like, no, all the way to the front. All, who wants to sit behind an engine? Go all the way to the front. Um, that leads to the one story. Evidently, this is the story you have your incredibly famous this belongs in a museum oh story yeah that is the story that is told about you like it's a myth now yes <laughs> i have been informed there's a story about me that has become mythological really and it was just i just say dumb things all the time so th- but this is a true story it's not a story i've ever told here and it's, now it's a podcast and now it's a podcast <laughs> right but this is not a story that I, I i think is like that big of a deal but i was okay. loading this family they were the first group on and i have the dad's elbow and they sit right behind the engine and, and there's a guy at front load. So you face each other. And I, I said, excuse me, sir, you got to go to the front. And he looks at me and says, I am French. I can sit wherever I want. So I said, without, th- without thinking, <laughs> without thinking, I said, win a war and you can sit wherever you want. Now move it. And he, st- oh, and wow. he stood back up and they moved to the front. And I looked up and the guy, the guy's name is Brian, was loading across from me. He goes, you're so fired. <laughs> And as he dro- the boat drove away, he goes, oh, my God, you're so fired. And he's French. He's not going yeah, n- to say nothing. <laughs> not like, gonna if he does, just go, anyone. I hope you have a problem with the words you were hearing. <laughs> and he'll calm down. He'll, and he didn't complain. But uh, that, that, that story spread around the dock to the point where I came back years later. Oh, my God, you're the guy that said that thing to the French guy. Did you really say that? God. And I'm like, I say so many random things to people so often. That's the one that stuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I thought work in the summer, people just go and they think it's this fun thing. But I remember it had like moments to it, like getting there before the park opened to me was really magical. Like I'd walk across Main Street and you'd see the hordes just waiting. Yeah. And you'd get the boats ready, but it was like nice and cool out. And sometimes there'd even be a little bit of fog in the jungle. Mm-hmm. And yes. it was so peaceful. And then you'd hear the, you'd hear Walt Disney's voice, Disneyland is your land here. Here they come. <laughs> and they would literally just run right by us. And nobody <laughs> came right. in for like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Until Indy filled up. Yep. Yep. Uh, I was like, we'll be back. We'll be back. I'm like, yeah, this is just like high school. You ain't coming back. Jungle in the morning was a very distinct smell, which is, I, yeah. you, you can smell it some places sometimes. And it takes me back there mm-hmm. immediately. Yeah. It was so nice. Yeah. Uh, unless we were hungover, in which case, uh, not that great. But, uh, oh, God. I didn't have to work days too often in summer. Rarely, yeah. Yeah. Rarely. Which was lucky. Uh, I've interviewed almost 200 skippers at this point. I've only met one that preferred working day overnight. Really? And the guy that said day, I, I, I'm, I'm like, why? Everyone once I goes, oh, well, you know, nights are better, but I had stuff to do. I had girls to go out with. I wouldn't want to spend my time working at a theme park. And so it was had nothing to do with the jungle and all about his dating life. Ah, okay. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give you a pass for that. But everybody preferred working nights because the day started nice and slow and it would slowly build. And by the time you were at like your lunch break, it was just 45 minute wait and it was yeah. crazy busy. And everybody's pissed because A, Indiana Jones is too long. Yeah. B, it's 100 degrees. Yes. And C, they had to wait. Almost an hour to get on the Jungle Cruise. Yes, and they're waiting kind of outside. Now they're in a boat that's outside. Yeah. It's not air conditioned and the seats aren't padded. And Just yeah. make me laugh. Right? And then the worst for me in the summertime was working a mid-shift. Oh, oh yeah. those were worse. Because you get there like at 11 mm-hmm. when it's already super busy. And then you get off work at like 6 and it's still super busy. Right. Where <clears throat> Then you night- miss all the nighttime fun. Yeah, where at night... You get there and it's crazy busy, but it's, it just gets slower and slower the longer you're there. And it's just it's just driving that boat at night in the summertime. Nothing oh. better. Uh, nothing better. Were you there or was it still occurring when I was there that first summer we had water wars? Yeah, I was there for the first water wars. Yeah. There was only one. Really? There was only one because we destroyed them. Oh no! I'm think. I think we're talking about something else. Oh, oh, oh. what what are you talking you're about? You're talking about. I'm talking about the event with Storybook Land. Oh, re- I was not there for that. Oh my God! You can talk about that first. Okay. Yeah. 
Water Wars was a competition. The enemy of fun, I think, was the manager that oh. set it up. It was a competition between. And this was this was unfair. So they thought, wouldn't it be funny to take people from the storybook land who go through the you know monstro's mouth and do the kid stories, have them do Jungle and have Jungle Cruise skippers do their ride, and we'll film it. And if you see the video, it's all filmed before the park opened because the the angles of the sun's very early. And it seemed like a great idea to watch it. You're like, wow, you took funny people and sent them to a serious ride. Yes. They're going to kill. And then they took serious people to a funny ride. Okay, try to out funny skippers on their own ride. Yeah. It didn't work. One one group decided to do Michael Jackson as the, he was, he was the skipper. Oh. And he had like all these animals and like he had his chimp with him and he would sing and it was bad by the time he got to the Cambodian shrine oh, and, it went on. and then there was one where they tried to do songs the whole time they sung different Disney songs to the theme of what they were saying at the Jungle Cruise that, this sounds exactly what I would expect from uh, Storybook it Land. was it was and the best part about it is the late great dear Jerry York was the lead he, he had to drive the boat for them so he's sitting off to the side and you see him kind of he's got a great stone face but at one point they do a joke and he just goes Oh, and just like, you, see him, you see him just like frown and shake his head as he hits the just throttle. Tells him, don't do and that. that got all the skippers to laugh. My God, we're all, they're doing their bit, but we're all watching Jerry for his reaction. I can't imagine but the jokes that would occur from a Jungle Cruise skipper on Storybook. It was, it was literally, and I'm not exaggerating in the least. And if we could, I have copies of it. If we can get them online somehow, that'd be great. But it was one of the few times in my life where I laughed so hard, my stomach hurt. <laughs> Because we were in the, the Disneyland theater at the Disneyland University, like in oh. TDA. Like that's where they had the big event and they had trophies for the winner. And our two contestants were Benny LeMaster, oh who gosh. went as it went in women's clothing dressed as Lore. Fantastic. And so he did his trip, you know, uh, as a woman and was hysterical. Talked about going off to Russia and what it was like to fight in Russia. And you're like, <laughs> what? And talks about getting sick off eating bad shrimp and just all these like wild stories. <laughs> That was so funny. And then uh, the next one was Noel Cox. Who oh, my was, gosh. Who'd been an animator for The Simpsons and yeah. was a lead. And now he works at Knott's Berry Farm in their Ghost Town Live thing. And he played a guy named Duke Jupiter. And he did what he did on the Jungle Cruise. He's like, if you get in, if you got on my boat, if you do what I say, when I say, you just might come out of here alive. Get in. <laughs> and like then they, they interspersed it with videos of, of actual guests oh, in the nice. park. So it seemed like they were really on the boat. But it was right before the Iraq war. So they go by Agrabah. He goes, there's Agrabah. Soak it in. It's it's not going to look like that in another week or two. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to blow that to hell. And then, <laughs> right literally weeks before the war. Oh. And you go through the cave of the gold. He goes, this, this is where Michael Eisner keeps all of his salary, ladies and gentlemen. Look at all the gold. None for us, though. And uh, then he goes by like Prince Eric's ship. There's the ship. He's getting ready to go up. Blow the hell out of Agrabah. Good luck, boys. <laughs> so I had all of these that no, are in no way Disney at all. And so anyway, so so they vote Noel wins. He walks up and grabs a little trophy and he goes, did you guys really challenge Jungle Cruise skippers at a comedy contest? If you want to beat us at something, challenge us to Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, challenge us to something smart. Yeah. But it was, I had the video. Um, it was two of the funniest things I'd ever seen. We might have to digitize that. Yeah. And, uh, get that up. Yeah. That'd yep. be fantastic. It was absolutely some genius comedy. Wasn't there a joke about Monstro blowing his ass off? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you drive through the whale, oh my God. He goes, it smells like the dumpster out in between a pet store and a sushi bar. <laughs> <laughs> and Benny's thing was, this This was an incident that we will not get into. <laughs> He's like, we hint that something horrific had happened, but we will not be discussing it. Yeah. Uh, and he always said, uh, he goes, he goes this, this is from 101 Dalmatians, three, 105 Dalmatians. <laughs> like all these like straight to video sequels that he kept mentioning. <laughs> this is from Brother Bear 3, The Return to Brothers. <laughs> and it was just fantastic. It was very, very funny. And I felt bad for the, the Fantasyland cast members because they knew they were just getting clobbered. Oh. It's like it, it was an unfair fight. That is. Uh, yeah. You, you, brought, uh, you brought candy to a knife fight. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my god! They all got shivved. Every single one of <laughs> them right. shivved with their own candy canes. With their own candy canes. That's right. That's that the we best sat part. there and just sharpened. <laughs> but I did. My stomach hurt, and I was laughing so hard. I was crying and laughing, and it was oh, it was too much. That's magical. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I'm not even going to talk about my water wars. It's, it has okay. no candle. That Ours was just we would throw water on each other all, oh, all summer okay. uh, at any given moment. It had to be a sneak attack. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, the entire summer was just take the, the water that they yeah. provided so that way we yes. wouldn't dehydrate. Yes. And take that precious resource yes. and hit each other with it <laughs> in the most inventive way possible. Okay. Where did you aim? Usually the face. Okay. Yeah. Because I know from skippers of the 1970s, they played that game. Really? But it was aimed at the crotch. Oh. <laughs> you had to hit somebody in the crotch. Joke's on them. I pissed my pants <laughs> ahead of time. That was the only way to win that game. <laughs> I'm a thinking man. He goes, so yeah. He goes, you would be talking to somebody and they'd walk up and put a knee on your dog. Hey buddy, can you look at this? And they would hand you a piece of paper and then just hit you in the crotch with a cup <laughs> of water. And, you're, and you still had to do the next boat trip. And you're just... No, we didn't do that, uh, but we would take the air horn and, and you hold it upside down <laughs> oh, and yeah. blast somebody in the leg or that the That was cold, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Don't try that at home. Don't. that. Yeah, I did it to several people, but don't try that at home. <laughs> yeah, so I saw, I, I never participated, but I saw those water oh, okay. I did see some of those, yeah. Yeah, fun, but not as funny as... Uh, it depends on what, what lead was there, what you could get away oh, with. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, another thing I remember at the summer was uh, it got so hot that uh, kids would lap up the water. Oh, the I, Cruise one? yeah, I saw the boat coming around the corner and a kid was just kind of <gasps> like splashing it in his face to stay cool. And uh, I've never seen that. Oh, you I, oh. I would have called first aid immediately. We're just yelling. I was like, Stop it. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. You're going to die. <laughs> I remember, there was a joke that Benny would do. He'd be at the dock and he'd have a mouthful of water. Yes. Right? And he'd be scooping it up out of the river. Go, mm-hmm. Don't drink that. It's bad for you. And he would just like spit it out and then pass out <laughs> on the floor and made guests step over him. That was such a but great joke. Wouldn't move. <laughs> yeah. Like, forget you guests. <laughs> step over the, the fake dead bodies of our cast members. Those were the best dock jokes is where you committed to the bit and then failed to do your basic job. <laughs> Those were the best. <laughs> the bit, the, the the commitment to the bit. Oh, so good. That's all I cared about. We had one that we did one night where it was the last boat going around the jungle. Uh-huh. So nobody else had anything to do. So we set up Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. We had people oh, yeah. on both sides of the dock and the boats doing the cannons with the, the lights and yelling. I was there that night. They blew right through it. The skipper had no clue. It yeah. was an odd skipper who who didn't always understand <laughs> yeah. anything. Uh, yeah. 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 But he had no warning. He just showed up. I'm like, well, oh, you got to play along. That took so much effort to put together. Yes. yes. And then nothing. Yes. It was stunning. I think I was at front load, so I couldn't participate. I just watched. I'm like, this is awesome. But the fun thing about the other fun thing about working summer is you would see a huge influx of people that you never saw before. And some of them want to be skippers. A couple of them hated it and didn't want to be there. Oh, that and always we're happened. Like, we're like, let's get you somewhere else then. Yeah. Because we don't want you here if you're not that way. But you would see people that only worked summers, like teachers and whatnot. Mm. And um, you'd see, like, I had so many my last year there. I had so many trainees. I would I would get them like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, train them for three days, never see them again. So that was the weird thing is you were constantly, constantly training people yeah. who may or may not stay very long, hmm. which was weird. As a matter of fact, this one girl, this is, okay, this is a weird story. She was going to school in Northern California. Okay. I'm like, oh, where do you go to school? And she's like, oh, Northern California. I'm like, oh, well, well where? And she said, it's a weird college. You never heard of it. I'm like, try me. And she told me, I go, oh, yeah, one of my friends is a history professor there. Oh. She's like, oh. I've been trying to get into his class. I'm like, really? And she goes, like, yeah, but it's closed. I'm like, I'll get you in. <laughs> She's like, are you, you're kidding me, right? I'm like, no, no, no. So I texted him. I'm like, hey, this is, here's this girl's name. And he goes like, oh yeah, I'll add her. Oh wow. So I showed him, yeah, you're in the class. And she, the next day, and she's like, I told my parents that my trainer at Disneyland got me into my closed history class and they didn't believe me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, knows what? How wild. How weird is, what are the odds? Right. Yeah. Oh my god! But I trained so many people that I never saw again. Huh? And so, like in the winter, that's why I thought I'd talk about the summer because we can yeah. talk about different seasons. But in the summer, it's you need to be your most productive and get the most bodies through because it's so crowded. Yeah. But you also have an influx of your least skilled skippers. Yeah. Who don't know how to drive the boat? Everything is brand new. They're confused all the time. Mm-hmm. Some are there like two weeks and then they realize this is too much and then they quit. Would you ever freeze in the boat? I would freeze, especially during the day when I didn't want to be doing anything except for spieling. I would uh-huh. freeze. I like to get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would do like four or five trips and be like, yeah, okay. Okay. I want to get it. I enjoy my little break in the back. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm freezing about that. Like I knew Adam Rotella tried to do how many trips you could do in a day. Yeah. Uh, I forget I, what his number was, but it was too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there were guys that did it in the, in the 80s that were doing, I think, something like 40 to 42 trips a day. Oh. Which doesn't sound a lot, but that's 42 10-minute trips. Yeah. Where you're talking and constantly yelling and doing voices. And I like yeah. to talk a lot. Yeah. But- Good Lord God. I mean, that's like, what, five hours, four yeah. hours? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Everything about summer is you could dress better in the summer. You, you had, like, yeah shorts, and it was comfortable. Other places didn't you couldn't wear shorts. Really? And other places, you couldn't roll up your sleeves. Really? Until it was code 90. If you had long sleeves, you were not allowed to roll them up. Jungle Cruise, we rolled them up whenever we damn well... I would roll them up while I was putting on my shirt in costuming. <laughs> they had such weird rules look at because i would work uh if you worked um like main street yeah you i would roll my sleeves like you can't do that the same jungle cruise they just knew if you rolled up your sleeves you must work at jungle can't show your forearm your forearms that's that uh, that's in ecclesiastes 7 <laughs> show not the forearms unto thine enemy be a blessing unto thy nation that's right and be unclean <laughs> damn uncleanliness yeah so the i thought the costumes were better um you got sometimes you got to see people like I don't know if I told the story about Matt Neary. I think I did, Which where one? he worked there six or seven years in a row, but only in the summer. So when I was there, I think oh. I did. He showed up. It was like his fifth summer. Yeah, and he walks on the dock first day, just starts yelling orders at people. I'm like, who the <laughs> hell is this rookie? And he's like, what are you looking at, Rook? I'm like, well, you're a rookie. He's like, I've been here for five years. How long you been here? I'm like three months. <laughs> literally, literally been for three months. I know what I'm doing. I'm Dave Marley. I've been here three months. <laughs> That's right. And he knew every. He knew how to run that ride so smoothly. Yeah, he was and great. He was fantastic. He was the one that uh, took me up to Schweitzer to pee off of it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I never pee. I used to eat my lunch up there a lot. Yeah. Right where I peed. Right where you peed. Because <laughs> there's like a little pool up there. Yeah, there is. And I would sit up there by the pool, and it was there was shade, and I could watch the boats. Yeah. Because I I like chaos and I like noise, but I also sometimes would just crave like just 20 minutes of just. I'm sure that was beautiful. Silence and alone time. Yeah. And it was that weird feeling of, especially in the summer, when it was that chaotic. Yeah. That's where I would go have my lunch, mostly in the summer. Oh, wow. Because I needed that like 20, 30 minutes of just quiet, peaceful. And then I realized there's 90,000 people around me. Is that crazy? And I'm literally all alone in this huge open space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, pro tip, uh, never stick your hand in Schweitzer Falls. You never know what's coming over that fall. Do not touch that water. Yeah. There's little yellow streams in it. Just, uh, <laughs> just don't ever, yeah. don't ever touch Hold it. your breath. And then uh, night times it, it, in summer were the best. That was, I mean, that's literally what changed the course of my life. Yeah. Was working at nighttime at Jungle yeah. in the summer. It yeah. was phenomenal. It was yeah. like one of those like wonder years kind of deals where it's just so like, magical at a certain point especially yep. at the end of the night when uh, no one wants anything to do with your ride yep and i'm sure everyone that's worked there i'm sure you've had the same experience where you're there at night and you're looking around and you're just in this weird boathouse listening to you know moonlight Seren- that's why i use moonlight serenade and everything yeah yeah uh, it's our song looking at the jungle it's, and it's our song it's Trevor. beautiful <laughs> thank you so romantic <laughs> <laughs> It was my parents' song. Really? It was a song they played at their wedding. Moonlight Serenade. Yeah, it was their song. Apparently, there's lyrics to it. Right, can't be right. I, I was, I was, uh, I was at six one six doing a show, and uh, we were asking the crowd uh, if, what they wanted to hear for an encore, and somebody yelled "Moonlight Serenade," and I like, I, I don't, I don't know that, and I looked it up. Yeah, there's lyrics. Huh. I don't, I don't know that I ever want to hear them because uh, huh. it would taint the song to me. I yeah, think. yeah. Huh, okay. They're super graphic. <laughs> For the 40s, they were the graphic. 40s. Let's talk about forearms. It's awful. Man. <laughs> oh, I love a good callback. <laughs> oh, now I'm worried. Is there anything else yeah. I had? So that's a thought today. We just ruminate about summertime. Yeah. You got leads you didn't know we see? That's right. It was mostly when I was there, Jerry was lead, I think. He was still the day lead. Yeah, during the day. Yeah. At night, no. At night was a free-for-all. We had a lead named Rita, and she let us uh-huh. get away with just murder. Um, literal murder. There's somebody in the river that I'm not going to talk about where they are. But <laughs> I remember one day I came in, and it said Tracy. 
And Tracy still works at the for the company. Oh yeah. And I'm like Tracy, who I don't want some. And I started complaining. Some East Sider coming on, blah blah blah. And then Kaz, our good friend, the trainer's like, "Oh no, you will love her." And like literally half hour after Tracy got there, I'm like, can you be our mom? <laughs> Tracy can, was fantastic. Can you be our lead forever? <laughs> she was so great. Again, that, 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 here are the rules. You got to follow the procedures, go follow the policies, go have some fun. Yeah. But don't like burn anything down. Yeah. It was, it was that perfect. The ones that come in where I'm in charge now, I'm the boss. You're like, ah, you're, we're going to break you yeah. hard. <laughs> it's going to be sweet to watch you cry. Well, that's why I got so mad the second summer I was there and Jungle was down for a period mm-hmm. for refurb and, some people got to go to Treehouse and do nothing. And I had to go uh, to Big Thunder Mountain all the time. Oh. And because I was 18 and I didn't want to go to Big Thunder Mountain, every time they called me to Thunder as punishment, I would go get my costume and then take an extended lunch <laughs> at the in-between before I showed up at the ride. <laughs> And in retrospect, I'm like, you little ass. Because they called yeah. you over because it's insane. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. you show up an hour later. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hire 18-year-olds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was another th- weird thing I saw was apparently Space Mountain cost more to make than the actual park cost to make. Oh, not not adjusted for inflation, of course, mm-hmm. but... Uh, they and cost Splash more. Mountain too. Really? Yeah, those things are stunningly expensive. I think Splash Mountain is still the most expensive attraction they ever built. Really? I think it was more expo- expensive than Indy, maybe. Oh, yeah. Wow. I think. Yeah. Uh, Splash Mountain. We showed on Disney Night uh, on the lounge that we just had. We showed old vintage commercials at the top of the uh-huh. show, and the Splash Mountain one. They edit it to make it look like the drop goes thirty-five minutes. <laughs> like. <laughs> It just keeps going and going wow. and going and people's hats are flying off and it's just nothing but screams for like <laughs> the entire commercial almost. And in real life, that thing's over in like two seconds. Yeah. But uh, they make they really dragged it out. I had a friend that signed us in the park years ago when my girls were really little and it was my youngest daughter's first trip oh. on Splash Mountain. So I'm holding her. Yeah. And we, we, we've we never bought any photos ever except that one <laughs> because we're all smiling and laughing and her face is sheer terror. She's maybe two or three. Oh. And all, because it's right at the worst part where you're just going into the darkness. Yeah. And we're smiling and laughing and she's losing her mind. <laughs> and so we bought it because we laughed really hard. And then later I'm like, oh, we took a picture of our daughter's trauma. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's all that is. She can just take this to therapy when she's an adult. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they're all laughing and you're screaming for your life because you're a child. Everyone's got a... Your laughing place is childhood trauma. <laughs> 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 That's right. <laughs> Everyone's got a laughing place. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Now for the most dangerous part of our show, the return to civilization. If you've enjoyed the show and want to show some support while also getting some adventurously good extras, visit patreon.com slash the jungle podcast. Also, if you could be so kind as to follow the lads on Instagram, I know they'd be thrilled. At Dr. Skipper Marley and at the dot Trevor dot Kelly. See you hip skips next time in the jungle. <laughs>